Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. It's Saturday, March 4th, 2023. Here's your integral of the day. We have indefinite integral of negative 2x squared plus 8x plus 8 over x squared plus 4 times x minus 2 cubed dx. So probably if you've been with me for a while, you look at this, you go, oh, it's time for some partial fraction decomposition. And indeed it is. But it's not for the faint of heart because we have a repeated linear factor in the denominator, which just takes that spice level all the way up. Okay, so we have negative 2x squared plus 8x plus 8. x squared plus 4 is an irreducible quadratic. That's fine. It's this x minus 2 cubed that's going to give us a run for our money. So anytime you have an irreducible quadratic... As one of your terms, in the numerator, you need a linear expression, ax plus b. And then for x minus 2 cubed, remember, we have to list that three times, starting with x minus 2 to the first. Then you would have x minus 2 squared. And lastly, x minus 2 cubed. Now that's just a linear repeated factor, so each of the numerators is going to be plain old constant, cde. Okay? Good, and then the first part proceeds as normal. We just multiply through by the LCD, which in this case is x squared plus 4 times x minus 2 cubed. Great. And now let's see what we're left with. So negative 2x squared plus 8x plus 8 equals ax plus b times x minus 2 cubed plus c times x squared plus 4 times x minus 2 squared, d times x squared plus 4 times x minus 2, and then e times x squared plus 4. Don't start multiplying this all out. You will drive yourself crazy, okay? So when you have this repeated linear factor, you're going to have to do this kind of process of plugging in values for x to make it 0, finding a constant, and then cleaning up, refactoring, and repeating. Watch what I'm talking about. So we're going to start off, let's let x equal 2, because I noticed that that's a 0 of almost all the factors. So if x is equal to 2, on the left-hand side, let's see, we're going to have negative 2 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 plus 8. If I plug in a 2 for x here, that whole thing's going to just be 0, plus this whole term will be 0, this will all be 0, boop, boop. and then lastly, I just have e times 2 squared plus 4. You see how nicely that works out? So we have now negative 8 plus 16 plus 8 equals e times 4 plus 4 is 8. These 8's cancel. 16 equals 8e. So then I know e is 2. All right, here's kind of the funky part. So once you know e is 2, you can't plug in anything else, any other values of x that are going to zero out and help you find these constants, and nothing will make x squared plus 4 zero over the real numbers. So we actually go back to this step right here and substitute in 2 for e. I know, it's a little strange. So we have negative 2x squared plus 8x plus 8 equals ax plus b, x minus 2 cubed, c times x squared plus 4, x minus 2 squared, etc. Just keep it going. And then I am going to plug in 2 for e right here. So that means I'm going to have plus 2x squared plus 8. Okay, I already distributed it. What do you do now? You're going to subtract that over to the other side. So minus 2x squared minus 8. Uh-huh. 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 So this is gone. And then now I have, on the left-hand side, negative 4x squared plus 8x. 
And I can factor that. I can take out a negative 4x and I'm left with x minus 2 equals ax plus b times x minus 2 cubed plus c times x squared plus 4, x minus 2 squared plus d times x squared plus 4 times x minus 2. And then I can cancel out an x minus 2 from everybody. Do you see that? Take one out of here. Now this is just squared. This is to the first and this is gone. And we can repeat the process again where I'm going to let x equal 2. Okay, so right now we have negative 4x equals ax plus b times x minus 2 squared c times x squared plus 4 x minus 2 and then d times x squared plus 4. Do you see where we're at? And then now we're going to repeat the process. So let x equal 2. And let's see what happens. So on the left-hand side, that's negative 4 times 2, 0 plus 0 plus d times 2 squared plus 4. So now we have negative 8 equals 8d. So d is negative 1. Now what do you think we do? Same thing, yes. So go back to right here and substitute in negative one for d. All right, negative four x. It's not like it's super complicated, it's just repetitive and tedious and you have to be focused. So if you make a mistake, a simple mistake it will ruin everything for you yes negative one let me concentrate <laughs> times x squared plus four okay so this is what what is this negative x squared minus four over here and so to cancel that out let me add x squared plus four to both sides okay good and then now this is gone and I have x squared minus 4x plus 4 on the left hand side which factors it will it always will work out this way okay into x minus 2 quantity squared Ooh, I know it's finally coming together look at us surviving and thriving okay I can only cancel out one factor of x minus 2 don't get carried away because right here there's only one bam bam Okay, I'm not mad at it. I'll rewrite it. x minus 2 equals ax plus b times x minus 2 plus c times x squared plus 4. We're in the home stretch, you guys. Don't fall apart now. 0 equals 0 plus c times 2 squared plus 4. So 0 equals 8c. c is 0. Okay, and do we have more to do? Yeah, just plug in 0 for C there. So now we're back to X minus 2 equals AX plus B times X minus 2. I can divide by X minus 2 on both sides. Just cancel that out. So then 1 equals AX plus B. There's basically like a 0x over here, right? So that means a is 0 and b is 1. Oh my god, we made it. I know, I kind of flew through that. <laughs> but I just want to show you it's, it's not as bad as it might seem when you first set out to solve it. This repeated linear factor, it's just a technique you have to practice. And they I don't think they come up as often as the other kinds. So it can be intimidating. It certainly can. Okay, so now what do we have? Let's put this all back into our original integral. Let me go, let me copy paste it from up above. Where was it? Here, this guy, because we have all the constants now. Let me copy this. And we know that a is zero, so this is going to be 0x plus b was 1. c was also 0, so this whole term's gone. d was negative 1, and then e was 2. Okay, so let's write out 
we have the integral or antiderivative 1 over x squared plus 4 minus 1 over x minus 2 squared plus 2 over x minus 2 cubed dx. And all of these you should be able to do pretty easily. Um, let me rewrite it really quickly. 1 over x squared plus 4, you should have the antiderivative memorized. This one, I want you to think of it as like x minus 2 to the negative second, and then plus 2 times x minus 2 to the negative third. Okay, here we go. This is the most satisfying part. Antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 4 is going to be 1 half tan inverse x over 2. Good. Now, Never mind that this is x minus 2 instead of plain old x. You don't need to do a u sub. If you let u equal x minus 2, du would be dx, so it's kind of unnecessary. Just go ahead, apply your rules of anti-differentiation. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So you would have x minus 2 to the negative first, and then if I divide by another negative 1, this is going to become plus. Good? And then same thing here. Never mind that it's x minus 2. Just add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, so it's plus 2 over negative 2 times x minus 2 to the negative second, plus c. Put plus c immediately. Some of my students have been leaving it off and then just putting it at the very end. That's a no-go. I still do minus 1. they got to get it together. Okay, and then final answer, 1 half tan inverse x over 2. Then we should write this as plus 1 over x minus 2 minus 1 over x minus 2 squared plus c. So I'm sure you'll agree the hardest part of this was just solving for the constants, finding the partial fraction decomposition. The actual integral itself was pretty easy squeezy, as my high school chem teacher would say. Loved her. Um, so yeah, I just, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I probably would not put something like this on a test because it doesn't really check to see how much calculus my students know. It's more how good are you at finding partial fraction decomposition, which is important, but mm. anyways, hope everyone has a lovely Saturday. The sun is out. I'm happy. I definitely am not a doom and gloom rainy kind of girl. And if you want to check out any of my other playlists, there's plenty of integrals and calculus and whatnot to keep you happy and busy. And you can also see what I'm up to on Instagram and TikTok at Math TV with Professor V. Give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.